God's Word, the standard for life with Prophet TB Joshua. You are Alpha and the Omega. And Omega. Worshiping you. You are Lord. You are worthy. People of God, Emmanuel. If God is for us, who can be against us? If God is for a nation, who can be against her? You may be seated. I greet you all in the mighty name of our Lord Jesus Christ and with the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit. Viewers, thank you for being part of today's broadcast. You shall be blessed as you watch in Jesus' name. Amen. Now it is time to listen. I mean, it is time to pay attention to God's Word because God lives in His Word and does nothing without his word. Hallelujah. Amen. You know, Satan does not want you to understand the message of God because he knows that the message will enable you to step out of darkness into light. So before we go into the message, I would like us to bow down our heads for prayer. Father, we thank you. Holy Spirit, we thank you. Lord Jesus, let every doubt in their hearts turn into faith. Amen. Let every unbelief in their hearts turn into belief. Amen. Father, open their hearts to your faith. Open their hearts to your spirit. Open their hearts to your word. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Hallelujah. Many people accept the name of Jesus Christ, but not the life of Jesus Christ. When I say the life of Jesus Christ, I mean God's kind of a lifestyle. God's kind of lifestyle says that no matter the situation you are in as a Christian, you can be happy even when there is nothing to be happy about on the outside. In other words, God's kind of lifestyle is a lifestyle based on positive faith. That is, 
positive thinking, positive talking, and positive acting. As Christians, how many of you would say, thank you, Lord, for healing me, whereas you are still in pain? How many of you would say, thank you, Lord, for blessing me, whereas the signs of poverty are still there? How many of you would say, thank you, Lord, for setting me free, whereas you are yet to obtain real freedom? Today, when you are sick and it is time to pray, you pray for healing. Jesus, heal me. Jesus, heal me. Jesus, heal me. When you are poor and it is time to pray, you pray for blessing. Jesus, bless me. Jesus, bless me. When you are blessed and it is time to pray, you give thanks to God. Thank you, Lord, you are holy. Thank you, Lord. And forever you are God. <laughs> Praise God. <laughs> Hallelujah. Let me tell you, everybody is exposed to things which are not consistent with God's Word. If these things control your feelings and your feelings control your faith, you can be a Christian, yet controlled by Satan's devices. Amen? This will bring me to the question which is the title of today's message. Whose control are you under? Ask your neighbor, neighbor, whose control are you under? Ask the viewers at home, viewers, yes. whose control are you under? Yes. Hallelujah. Yes, our proof text shall be taken from the Gospel of John, chapter 11. I will take my reading from verse 32. This is all about Mary and Martha at the graveside of their brother Lazarus. I read, when Mary reached the place where Jesus was and saw him, she fell at his feet and said, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. Now, let us go to verse 38, the same chapter, verse 38. Jesus, once more deeply moved, came to the tomb. It was a cave with a stone laid across the entrance. Verse 39, take away the stone, he said. But Lord, said Martha, the sister of the dead man, by this time, there is a bad odor, for he has been there four days. Then Jesus said, did I not tell you that if you believed, you would see the glory of God? So they took away the stone. Then Jesus looked up and said, Father, I thank you that you have heard me. Praise the Lord. Here, the two sisters, Mary and Martha, were unable to see beyond the death of their beloved brother. What they could see was a dead body that was inside the tomb for the past four days. But Jesus, being under the control of the Holy Spirit, so beyond the grave. Beyond the grave, there was life. 
As a Christian, when you keep looking at things from the outside, like Mary and Martha, you cannot have a right judgment. When you keep looking at things on the outside, you cannot have a right judgment.